welcome back to another episode. So for a video today, I thought it would be interesting to test out some of Kodak's 16 millimeter Ektachrome stock, which I've never used before and it's been around forever. And then it got discontinued about 10 years ago and then re-released in 2017, I believe for 16 millimeter and then re-released again for 35 millimeter a year or two ago. And I think that was because of the show Euphoria. They used it in some scenes. So I've seen it from time to time around, but it wasn't till seeing that show and thinking, you know, that show looks amazing. Maybe I could test it out on my little Bolex camera, which is definitely not what they used on that show, but essentially it's the same film. It's the same colors and contrast dynamic range. You know, they just had better cameras, bigger 35 millimeter negative, better lenses and crew <laughs> money and everything else. Okay, so without boring you too much, just a very quick background on what Ektachrome is. It's a color positive film, and if you've ever shot color positive film on stills camera, usually you develop the image as a positive rather than the color negative style film, which then needs to be inverted when it's scanned in. But positive film can also be cross process developed as a color negative, which makes it a little bit cheaper and it also gives it this weird green, interesting looking image. And that's what I did for this, and that's also what they did for that show. Cool. So for the lighting for this shot here in the room, uh, I lit this with an Aperture 300D overhead in a Chimera large softbox, which is this soft dome light above her head. A 600D spotlight creating that circle effect on the wall. Then I just had a couple of other lights with red gels on them, creating that red glow on the wall. If you're a cinematographer, photographer, or anything really, and you're trying to level up to get better creative jobs, having a website is crucial so people can see your work and hire you. Squarespace is easy to use. You don't need to know how to code or anything like that. You can just drag and drop and it's good to go. So whether you want to show your portfolio of work, run an online store, everything's built into the site. If you want to build a website, you can start a free trial at squarespace.com slash lewispots to get 10% off the first purchase. So there's this shot I did in a previous video talking about the 1200D and while I was shooting that I just thought maybe I'll try to shoot some of this on the Ektachrome just handheld with similar camera settings just to see what it looks like. So this is the Komodo log and this is the flat Ektachrome scan. Then this is a typical Rec 709 on the red and I'm not too sure what conversion light to use for the Ektachrome because it doesn't have as much latitude as the Vision 3 film stocks. So the Cineon conversion light, which is what they say you should use for film, pretty much destroys it. Maybe it doesn't work so well with Ektachrome or maybe this shot's just a bit too underexposed. Anyone from Kodak or anyone who knows in the comments, let me know which conversion light to use. But I can get it looking the way I want without any lights just by adding some contrast and moving the colors around a little bit. So then this is me grading the red the way I want it to look. And this is grading the film the way I want it to look. Just trying to get as much latitude out of it as I can, but still keeping a good amount of contrast. Later at night, I did this similar shot with the bed moved around and I put a falconized light mat outside the window on a warmer tungsten color. Also had a uh, IntelliTech Megalite cloth above the bed 
and you can really see how quickly it falls off to black. This is the ungraded version, how it came back scanned. And there's not really that much information in the shadows. I could only alter the colors a little bit and add a small amount of contrast compared to this take I did here on the Komodo. But in fairness, maybe this shot is a little bit underexposed. I severely underestimated how much light was needed for that ectochrome. I think they say you lose about two stops off the top and the bottom. So there's a really small window that you have to shoot in. So I was happy to test it and see how it looks, but honestly, with the amount of manipulation you can do in Resolve with the usual film stocks like the Vision 3s, the 500Ts and the 250Ds, I probably wouldn't use Ektachrome that much in the future anyway. I mean, if I want to push the colors around in a certain way that I want them to look, I can do that and get it close enough in the grade. The DP from Euphoria in an article said, it's a reversal stock, but we processed it as a negative which gives you these weird colors and creates a very thin, green, muddy negative that you either have to color correct or correct with filters in camera. I mean, that doesn't sound great. And if you look at the 4K ProRes file that I got back, it does look that way. It's quite green and there's not much latitude. So I'd probably rather use the usual Vision 3 film stocks in the future, unless you're really going for a very particular look and you have more resources to light that really contrasty 100 ISO stock. And there's this theory that I agree with a little bit that some people like to have a certain base layer color on the negative. Say if you're shooting tungsten stock outdoors or in daylight conditions and you're not using a color correction filter, you'll have this really blue image. And then once you color correct it in post, you'll have this base layer of blue underneath the image and it'll affect all the other colors in one way or another. So there, so there is a place for it and I'm happy with how some of it looked, but I feel I could have got a similar looking image with the cheaper, easier to use film stocks. And then there's always Steve Yedlin's genius color theories that nothing really matters except for the design of the image pipeline downstream. But that's a whole lot of information, definitely, for another video. But that's all I have for this one. Thank you so much for watching.